Hi there, Dan from OnlineBaseCourses.com. Hope you're doing really well. Apologies for the terrible lighting and the relatively bad sound. I'm in a completely empty room. Just moved to Singapore. My wife's got a job here, so moved from London to Singapore. Uh, I've got a mobile rig that I'm going to do a video on because it's working really well for remote sessions. But at the moment, none of my studio's here. Nothing's here. So, But I just want to keep going with my videos. So I'm just going to do one like this in this setup and see how we get on. So I've had a few questions from subscribers and I had from two different people I had a comment about the fact that their fretting hand thumb they were feeling pain in their fretting hand thumb now without seeing what they're doing uh, because they didn't go into too much detail I don't know exactly what they're doing wrong, but there is a common thing that that beginners or people just coming back into bass playing from many years away fall into a little bit of a trap so I, I, I'm going to go down that route and, and assume that they're doing that. But if you are having any pain whatsoever when you're playing the bass, if you're just starting out, you, you need to not play through the pain barrier. That's the first thing. But you need to, to take it seriously how to hold the bass and really boring things before you get on into any kind of decent playing. So that's what I'm going to get into today. And the first point really is that, you know, I've got the strap on this bass here but your fretting hand should be in no way involved with keeping the bass from moving around, okay? So the, this was a Music Man Stingray 5, very nicely balanced, the straps kind of here. If I stand up, so that's kind of how I would be playing with when I'm gigging. Now you can see I, I don't need to grab the neck here because you've got the strap and there's no, no need for that. But if I'm sitting down like this and I don't have the strap, I still wouldn't need this fretting hand to, to grab onto the neck. So these three points that I'm talking about, you've got the cutaway at the bottom of the base here. That should be on your, on your leg, okay? I've got the bit where the, the base kind of um, flattens out a little bit here. I've got my arm about there, just resting on it, such that my hand can just sort of flop down here where I'm going to be plucking, okay? So you've got that point there, this point here, and finally the top horn just against my body. Now those three points, you can see I'm holding onto the base here, but if I let go, nothing happens. So this is what I would suggest that you, you do when you're first starting out with the base. Some bases are quite neck heavy and they go this way, okay? And I've got a base that this bit here is very, not very, not very long at all, so it slips off. So with that base, I will play with a strap, and if that helps you, then, then do play with a strap. I adjust mine so that it's roughly about this, this sort of position when I stand and when I sit, okay? Obviously, if you want to play your bass really, really low down, which looks really cool when you play, that's up to you, but it will alter your technique. So I, I, that's why I like to, many players, like to adjust the straps so that when they're standing or sitting, it's exactly the same. So we've got this point here, and now we don't need to grab on. Now, I didn't mention, but if the two subscribers, I mean, there's an outside chance if it's sort of arthritis or some sort of medical issue, then go and see a doctor if you're a bit worried about that. But if it is the fact that you're really grabbing on, and I've seen some people just sort of have their thumb underneath the base so that they're, they're, they're bearing the weight of the neck down, and that would hurt a bit, but it would also completely hinder your ability to, to fly around the neck. You know, if I'm just going... You want to be free to be able to go in any direction, and if you're grabbing hold of the neck, that's not going to happen. So that's what I'm guessing is, is going on. I'm just going to do something a very terrible shot with my iPhone, just putting it here so that you can see the thumb at the back here because that's the other point to make, is that when you fret a note, you're obviously going to push your finger in right behind where a metal fret is, and your thumb is behind, I'll show you this in a minute, but your thumb is behind the neck and you're pressing against the back to fret a note. Now, either direction, whether you're pressing when you're pressing in from this any finger here and when your thumb is touching the back there should be there doesn't need to be too much of a grip listen here that's not enough there's a note if i continue to press harder and harder 
does nothing. It just chokes the sound. It's not a good way to play. The bass doesn't sound good that way, and it's it's too much pressure on your on your hands. So I'm going to get this iPhone out and show you. So there's the there's the finger pressing down behind the neck. I'm right on the fingertip. And if I just move here, so look, the thumb is kind of roughly behind where the finger is, sort of in the middle of the neck there. And it's, it's really light. I'm not pushing in very hard at all, just enough. Just enough to get that note fretted. If I spread out my fingers a bit, all those fingers are behind the fret there. That thumb's behind the second neck, the second finger, sorry, behind the second finger. And it's just straight, kind of in the middle there. And I'm not pushing in that way. And my fingers aren't pushing this way too much. It's just very much in the fingers. Not like a double bass where you have to get a lot of arm movement in to get a note. It's very much a light touch that you want to develop when you're playing the bass. And when you do that, and you practice scales, bass lines, what have you that way, just the lightest touch that you need to actually to, to make a note, okay? And then you can dig in a bit more once you, once you have that. So I know I've done a bit of guesswork as to, as to the two subscribes I have and the thumb pain there, but really that's the, that's the most common fault you, you would see with beginners is grabbing hold of the neck and taking the weight of the bass on the thumb and, and really this hand, in my case, the left hand, your fretting hand just needs to be free to, to glide up and down. I'm just sliding across very lightly. And when you press, just you're not pushing that thumb in, okay? And obviously, if you're just starting out with bass, you're going to be positioning your fingers and your wrists and your hands in slightly awkward ways anyway. So you've got to be slow. You've got to get used to this. One thing I didn't mention. So the wall behind me, my bass is not parallel to the wall. I'm kind of moving it about 45 degrees and it's the, and the neck is also pointing upwards a bit, okay? So that allows loads of access to the entirety of the neck. That also allows me to keep my wrist here very straight so so you're not kind of aggravating any muscles when you're when you are pressing. There is a, there is a bit of pressing, you know, pressure going through the wrist and the fingers. Um, when you're playing. Now, if that's also a problem, you might want to investigate the action of your bass. It's the height of the bottom of the string to the top of the fret, okay? Many cheap basses or badly set up basses have a very high action and you're fighting with the bass, okay? So make it easy, make life easier by lowering that action. You can even go for lower gauge strings. Victor Wooten, Mark King, I think they use 40 or even less, even lighter gauge that allows you to fly around the neck much quicker and press against the fretboard easier. Okay, so I, I hope that helped you a little bit. I hope that helped Richard, and I'm really sorry I forgot the other name of the other subscriber. But yeah, they were just, um, I was asking for questions so I can do a QA. and I didn't get quite enough to do one video of loads of Q&As, but that's good. I think it's better to just go slightly more depth and so I'll probably do that. If you've got any, any questions, leave them in the comments or get in touch via onlinebasecourses.com, either way. And I can just do a video like this, just demonstrating uh, what might be an issue. Feel free to send me a little video as well so I can actually just see what's going on and hear what's going on. That makes it much easier to actually diagnose if there's a really obvious problem going on. But thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.